Hello there, internets, and YouTube, and all the rest of you. Welcome to another video. This is Bill Dick, and I'm Sal Good Sam. The video portion of this post is going to be footage of me drawing a portrait of Troy Carlson and his daughter. Uh, I did it. Troy's a, one of my Patreon backers, and I did this as a reward because uh, he was one of the pledges that put me over officially $100 on Patreon. And I'm thinking that I will do another sketch portrait like this for the person whose pledge puts me over $145 a month. So go check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash salgood, and consider becoming a patron of the arts. Maybe it'll be you. Hey there, podcast listeners. Uh, so taking a, took a week off there posting podcasts, strictly speaking, although I did do the, the Bastard's Tale reading. But uh, I just took a break because I just didn't have any things to talk about. And uh, I don't want to force these. In fact, I wasn't planning on doing them weekly or anything like that. I figured maybe once a month would be good. More often if the Patreon goes really well. And I was just, but I was just reading a piece. Um, what was it again? The, the Toxicity of Talent. Or Did You Roll a Natural 20 at Birth? It was, is on TerribleMinds.com. Uh, written by, no, no byline, Chuck Welding. Chuck Welding's blog, TerribleMinds.com. It's about writers. Um, but I agree with a lot of it. And, it, and it, it reminded me of some conversations I had with students in the past recent couple of weeks at, at, at uh, Sin Studio, downtown Montreal. Um, so I thought I'd take a minute while I'm packing books here to ramble briefly on the subject of talent and imposter syndrome. Um, so Chuck's thesis is that talent isn't really a thing. It's a very fuzzy-wuzzy concept, timey-wimey kind of thing. Um, that's what you're boring with. It's the end product of a lot of practice and effort. There is a, some room for the idea of aptitude, I think. Like, you're born with a particular aptitude for um, a, attention, your, your, your natural preset default point of a level of attention and how much you can focus on doing things. Because that's key to practicing and, and learning uh, really uh, more elaborate tasks like playing music or dancing or making art. Um, you name it, writing. Um, but even that is an acquirable skill. Focus, you may have a, a default inclination, you may even be ADHD, but there are a number of um, practices one can acquire, and not just chemical either, to increase your level of focus. That itself is, is a, 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 pli a pliable skill. Uh, and everything else that signifies talent are acquirable skills. It's all stuff you have to learn. It helps when you start early. I started early. Uh, I also had um, even better than sort of pseudo-positive support. I didn't experience boosterism. What I did experience was uh, an environment where being a professional artist was already taken for granted. There was never a, a point at which my immediate family said, oh, you should start thinking about taking things more seriously and picking a, a trade or something. I got that from teachers, but I did not get it at home. And because of that, I actually saw it as a way around the obstacles that the institutions were presenting with. So um, I, I definitely didn't uh, ever believe that there was something special or essentialist about skill and talent and being creative and making art. Um, and I think it's true, I agree with Chuck, that one of the negative outcomes of the myth of talent is imposter syndrome because it's just that if you're has been spending a while trying to become good at writing or drawing and aren't getting where you want to where as fast as you want to that maybe it isn't because there's a problem with either your expectations or your modes of practice but that in fact somehow it could be that you are not in essence an artist and that this is it's not just a question of there being a skill that you can acquire uh, and, you know, it's tied up with this notion that an artist is some sort of essentialist state versus an acquired trade. It's not. 
I'm not, I wasn't born an artist. I was born to some artists and that helped, but they weren't born to artists. Uh, not completely. A uh, mixed bag. Yeah, a lot of creative people in the family. Um, but because it was seen favorably by the culture of the family. There is no actual imposters. There are only people trying to do things and succeeding at varying levels of skill and for various reasons, but most often having to do with how much practice they put into things and how good they've gotten at learning effectively and capitalizing on their experience. Um, I don't, I wouldn't rate myself uh, exceptionally high by my own standards, but I do pretty well overall in terms of like what I've able, been able to accomplish uh, despite even handicaps sometimes or like lack of funds or abilities or particular aptitude or my dyslexia for that matter. Um, but also opportunities and being able to kind of get pretty lucky about picking the right ones and learning to recognize what the right ones are. Um, and learning from mistakes, which I, I make plenty of. So, you know, that's, that's, you're always going to feel like it's challenging. You're always going to feel like it's hard. And, I, and it's not to say that you won't have anxieties. I've got plenty of those. But it, it, you, the, the one that we call imposter syndrome is totally connected and tied up with this idea that there is, there are authentic artists and writers and that there are imposters. It's not true. Uh, varying levels of skill. Uh, some to one person's taste and some to another's. Uh, some, unfortunately, to no one's, and perhaps they'll never be appreciated or perhaps they are just aren't good. Um, often in the moment, we'll judge things as being poor and then later generations will look at them and go, you know, our ideas about natural language and conversational patterns have changed and we like to see them in our books and suddenly that's a good thing, you know. So it's, it's, it's just this constant shifting, moving, evolving thing. And as artists and creatives, we're, we're throwing darts at it uh, in the form of ideas that we have and can sort of make into a thing. Um, there are no fakes, not amongst those who are actually doing the work. You know, that's, that's what's authentic. You've got to do the work. You've got to put in the time, whatever the skill is that you want to acquire. You've got to practice diligently and not give up because it doesn't do what you want to do prematurely. These are all valid points. Um, but it's, it's not about something that courses through your veins, not in a literal sense. So that's going to be my ramble for this week's uh, podcast. I got to get back to packing up books. And take it easy, Self and Sam out. Here's some music to carry you on your way. For this podcast, all the music has come off of Sad Ocean Space Bear's Dream the Dark Dream. So go to Sad Ocean Space Bear, all one word, dot bandcamp.com. In this podcast, you heard uh, dogs, fireflies, and one of my particular favorites, uh, what I used for the theme song for Dream Life, my graphic novel, Country Road Late at Night. Uh, all of those are on Dream, Dark, Dream the Dark Dream on sadoceanspacehair.bandcamp.com releases. 
slash reasons. Genuinely one of my favorite albums, and I don't just say that because Michelle Breslin is an old friend of mine. It's actually true. I love this music. Um, so that's it for this podcast. Uh, subscribe at spillthink.org or on Mixcloud. Thanks for listening again, and don't forget, if you like what you hear and want to help support get this done or my comics done and I'll just read my comics get to be the first person to read my comics among the first people to read my comics uh, then subscribe to Spilt Ink via patreon.com slash salgood uh, become a patron of the arts for as little as two dollars a month and get all of my comics in your inbox along with my videos podcasts and other goodies um, I try to keep it interesting uh, I get a, a monthly support for uh, a wide spectrum of content. Go check out the activity blog and see what I post and see if it interests you. And speak of the devil, I just got my latest Patreon payment. And big news, it's over $100. Only just a hundred over $100, but it's over $100. Woohoo! Thank you very much to my Patreon patrons. In no particular order, Ian Hodgson, Tim Mormon, Emil Underberg, Michelle Darwin, Andrew Walsh, Troy Carlson, Nicola Vavu, Chris Nolan, and Shannon Becker. You're awesome. Thank you. And thank you to the two anonymous individuals who know who you are. You are also awesome. And all of those who are now thinking, I want to get in on this and pledge to the Spilt Ink Patreon and get Revolver. You too will soon be awesome. See you next week, or when I get to a good idea for another podcast. In the comments on Patreon, backers, hey, leave a note. Uh, give me suggestions for things you'd like me to hear me babble, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Is it? Yeah. You could do that on Mixcloud 2 or anywhere you see this. All right. So I'll get Sam out. Take care. is strong